Welcome back, everyone, to the Flow Track Podcast. Flow Track Podcast at gmail.com is the email address. Subscribe to the Flow Track Podcast YouTube channel. Happy Friday, everyone. Want to start with an update? We ended, um, well, we did a bonus pod. And at the end of the bonus pod, Gordon said he mistakenly sent an email. Did that, did that get rectified, Gordon? I haven't talked to you about that since. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it got rectified. I quickly Go. sent a follow up email like within two minutes of the, mm-hmm. the wrong email. And I think I, I think, I think he didn't see, he didn't see my mistake. So it's cool. Like he saw it, but he, I quickly covered it mm-hmm. up with the follow-up email. So we're good. I so think I'm, I'm think I'm, I think I'm, I'm think I'm clear. I think I'm clear through the, through the drama. So. Good. Good. Yeah. Speaking of the bonus pod, we need a bonus pod recorded it yesterday going to come out Sunday for the YouTube subscribers out there. We took stock of all the people we haven't seen yet outdoors in 2022. Tried to figure out what's going on. Now, immediately after we recorded that, Matthew Centrowitz announced that he was, or not Matthew Centrowitz, pre-classic announced that Centro's in the mile field. So that's a little bit out of date because Centro was one of the people we talked about the most. But our analysis still stands for him, I believe. And we talked about, what, 10, 15 other athletes? So that'll come out Sunday morning on YouTube for subscribers. So if you're not a subscriber yet, subscribe so you can get that, that bonus pot. Well, you got to be a member, not a subscriber. Sorry, member. Member, subscriber. One has a key card. The other one has a fob. I always get them mixed up. So you got to be a member of YouTube. Gordon's Goons, Kevin's Kings. You find it there on the, on the, on the YouTube page. But I enjoy doing the pod. I enjoy doing that episode because... Some people we legit like you forgot. Oh yeah, Stefan Hassan hasn't run this year. What's the deal with her? So we dug into people's racing history, try to figure out what was going on. Yeah, and uh, you want to talk a little bit about this Bowerman Milefield and Pre, which is in what two or three weeks now, end of the month. Well, first though, I want to talk about the pickup contest. Okay, sorry, I should. You know, I'm really bad at following the the rundown. Because I don't have it mm-hmm. up on my screen, I just, I just go where my heart takes me, and I apologize. So let's talk yeah. about the pickup contest. I need you to do one tweet a week and pay attention to the rundown. That's Gordon's assignment. Sprinter showdown in Kenya is the subject line here. These are all based around the Nairobi Continental Tour, so you can take your pick between Curly, Jacobs, or the field. And then on the women's side of things, you can take your pick between. Christine and Boma, Shelly and Fraser Price, and the field. You're going with who are you going with? I'm going with Curly and Fraser Price. I think I'm going with Curly and, and Boma. Yeah, that's what I'm going with. Curly and Mboma. I think we're sleeping on Mboma. I think Shelly Ann is the the name favorite. And Shelly Ann's yes. still good, but Mboma. Mm-hmm. Has yet to really get to her true peak, and her current floor right now, I think, is close to Shelly Ann's now peak because mm-hmm. Shelly Ann's on the back half of her career. Christine and Boma's on the front half, so mm-hmm. I'm going with Boma. So you can do the QR code, enter the pickup contest, win prizes. You can also text me or Gordon. We got a text. From someone here. Do you want to throw this up or you want me to read it? It doesn't matter. Uh, this was to you, Gordon, or directed to me? It's directed to me. All right. The disrespect y'all show Michael Norman on your show is jokes. Then turn around and talk about Curly like he's the second coming of Christ. They're essentially the same, but I still think Norman is more talented, especially over 400. Do you want to respond or do you want me to? Uh, you can respond on my behalf. Even though this was addressed to me. Uh, from one of our listeners, which I appreciate you texting. I appreciate it. Keep texting. Yeah, yeah. You can text Gordon at the number below our faces and text Kevin at the number below his face. Uh, but yeah. yeah, what are your thoughts on this old fella, well, young fella, who I, I don't know how old he is, but this person's uh, reaction to my Michael Norman opinion? Yeah, I don't even remember specifically what your Michael Norman opinion is, but I will say texting you, other than confronting you on the streets of Philadelphia, the best way to head a goal to get a hold of Gordon and tell him about his takes. Uh, I mean, 2021, there was no contest who had a better season. 
I almost think and this is me switching to me. I almost think people could approach it from the other side of like I'm giving Norman too much credit because I was like a Norman believer basically up until the Olympic final against all evidence, right? There was evidence that he wasn't going to be able to do what he did before. But, you know, I still think about 2018, 2019 Norman. So maybe this year is different, but, and, and if Curly's a one and two guy, they're not even going to be in the same event, right? Cause we assume Norman's going to stick to the four because that's what his coach has said, but Curly got a silver medal. That means something. Curly was in the mix all year in the one and the two. That's just the reality of it. Yeah. I mean, I think ever since I saw Curly win the 2019 USA championships over Norman, I think that was the moment it kind of turned for me. I was like, okay, Fred Curly, like you are, like, I don't know, I don't know what the specific phrase or thought that went through my head. But when I no- saw him win in 2019 Maybe against Norman, back. I forget what it was. But it was, I mean, it was a very, like, y'all motherfuckers better start, start <laughs> believing in Fred Curley type moment for him. I mean, he That's had a lot thought. of energy. I loved it. Very, very emotional, powerful energy. And I was like, okay, Fred Curley's the real deal. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, but yeah, I mean, and then he transferred into the one and two and everyone yeah. kind of doubted him. I probably was part of it because I was like, dude, you just, you just beat Michael Norman in a 400. You're looking good now. Yeah. Don't go to the one and two. And he's like, hold my beer. I'm going to start challenging Coleman and Jacobs and Lyles in their events. And he's yeah. holding his own right now. The question really isn't even Curly versus Norman. It's Norman versus Cherry. In the 400 or norman versus randolph ross in the 400 unless these guys race the same event at u.s champs and at world championships you can compare them because they're both it's not you get me back all right i think i'm back yeah kevin anyway. you you broke up a bit there but yeah I also thinking who who do you think texted me? Do you think it is a relative of Michael Norman? Like, do you think no, I think it's is... someone who's someone who saw you on the streets of Philadelphia and didn't quite have the time to get all their thoughts out, so they looked up the text number and 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 they sent it your way. Yeah, I listen. I have what on the rankings. I have Norman like sixth or seventh in the in the quarter, and he moved up recently because of his two hundred meter time, right? Which is, which is fair, but it, he's got to do it in a four hundred. Like, look at his last several races. I almost think you could make an argument. It's like you could make an argument. Randolph Ross should be in front of him. But it's like, are you gonna put are you gonna put Norman in front of Gardner? No, Zambrano. No, James. No, Cherry's been ridiculously consistent. And then Curly, he may not run, so Norman might move up to five just because Curly's not there. But Curly's beat him in a two hundred this year. Run 44, run sub 10. Like that's a better resume so far. I think Norman would acknowledge that that's a better resume so far. But again, ultimately, it's not going to come down to this guy versus that guy because one of them is going to do the one and the two and the other one's going to do four. The question is, can Norman be the 43-second guy from 2018-2019? If he can do that, then he's back in the mix for the medals. If he can't, it's going to be similar to last season where he's on the outside looking in. But I've always been a big Norman guy. Always been. I mean, I was at that... Instead of the indoor championships with his world record and then the USC 4x4, outdoors at Eugene when he smashed 44. Uh, that West region race, I was there when, what did he split? 43.05 or something is the, the fastest split in history or one of the fastest splits in history or at least recorded history. Like I've been there for all the, the Norman highlights, which is why I was so bullish on his potential. And, I know you said 19, you kind of hopped off the bandwagon after USA's. I, I have to go back and see what I said or wrote, but I think I remember saying, yeah, Norman's still the favorite though. Norman, Nor- Norman's going to get it together. And then he obviously had the injury issue in 19, but I held on for a long time to the belief that he would 
he would be not just a a gold medalist, but someone who could potentially break the American record. That's what I really felt about Norman. My opinion stands. That's all I got to say. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> anyway, text Gordon or myself, and we'll talk about your question for five minutes at the beginning of the show, just like we did. Uh, oh, yeah, here we go. This is, what, 2020? That's back when I put my camera directly underneath my nose for some reason, and uh, I was co-hosting with now Tennis Pro at the time, low track content guy, Lincoln Shrike. I don't know if he's making the argument for breaking 43 or I am, but I probably didn't disagree with him if it was Lincoln. That's so crazy. The one year out Olympic predictions you guys were talking about on that pod. back in It seems oh, like 2020 was? was last year, but it, it was yeah. it was two years ago. It's kind of wild. Well, yeah. and if you ask me in 19 is when he ran 43, 45, I, there's probably something of me saying in 2019, he could break the world record and might go under 43. Because when you open with the 43-4, what other conclusion do you expect people to draw? So, yeah, I've been on the Norman train for a while. Maybe it was we'll Lincoln see. who texted me. Oh. Maybe it was Lincoln. You know? Plot twist. Plot twist. Former colleague. That would be the ultimate. The host. <laughs> All right. What else do we got here? Oh, new segments next week. I want to talk about the new segments because there's a chance for audience participation. You ready for this, Gordon? Sure. Okay. So here's what we need. Uh, Monday, we're going to do some new segments, kick of the week, et cetera, et cetera. We don't, you know, we don't need the audience for that stuff. Although if you have kick submissions, you know, send them to us. Wednesday, though, for Wednesday and Friday, we got two segments. So one is going to be uh, coaching advice. If you want Gordon to weigh in on your training, <laughs> this is your chance. So we're looking for any event, any level, it doesn't matter. Send it in. The segment is going to be called Internet Coach, where we are going to uh, – basically, it's just advice. Advice that you should not take seriously, but we'll have a lot of fun with it. The other one we're doing, uh, Guess My PR. Fun little game called Guess My PR. You write in with workout information. You can write in with other information. Doesn't matter. And then at the end of the email, you know, do a couple spaces at the bottom. Put your actual PRs. I'll either challenge Gordon or Gordon will challenge me. He'll read some stats. He'll be like, oh, got one from Colt here. Last week he did uh, four times 800 in 217. He wants you to guess his 1500 PB. And you're like, well, I don't know. Da -da 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 -da. So Guess My PR. Um, or any sort of track and field coaching advice. Write in uh, either flowtrackpodcast at gmail.com or I don't know, however people get in touch with the show, Instagram, do you Twitter, think we, whatever. Do you think we need to create like a legal disclaimer? Do we need to think we get a lawyer? Because my uh, internet yeah. coaching advice, if you, <laughs> I don't want someone pulling a hamstring, but you know. I think it'll be very clear. From the tone of the segment, <laughs> and if people All I know pay is... attention to the show, they know that the coaching advice should not be taken seriously. It's meant to be. But fun. you know, a clock is right twice a day, so yeah, the internet advice might be right tw two out of twenty-four times. So yeah, yeah, you know, one in twelve chance of getting some great advice. Yeah, so so send those in. You can send them in starting now. We want at least one. For, for both of those for next week because we're starting some new segments. So that should be that should be good. Um, Rick Moran says, bring back the old camera angle. Actually, I'm trying to – Colt's going to try to get me a better camera. And by get me a camera, I mean recommend one. He's not actually buying it. But uh, <laughs> there you go. Actually, for those of you who don't know, Gordon does meetings where half of his head is out of it, and it's so disorienting. Like you'll log on to a meeting with Gordon. It'll be like this. Is it an issue? I didn't know there was an issue. Is this it, like a, yeah, for some a reason, message that everyone has no, about my meeting habits? No, there's no. I haven't started a side text chain about it, but it for some reason it throws me off. It just bothers me when I can't either turn your camera off or I want to see your mouth move. It's very weird. I don't know. I can't explain it. 
but having half of your head in a shot is really weird. Like when I just see your eyebrows, your forehead, and the hair on your head is very strange. So it'll be like if so. I did a podcast, like, like. Yes, that's like half this. of the meetings I do so with you. I'm, yeah, I'm go like, full screen, Colt. Like that. Also, hey guys, we we should say one of the segments also is going to be a, a Gordon. I don't, what are we calling it? Gordon gets mad or something segment. Gordon's going to go off. We're going to try to bottle all of Gordon's anger into one segment about something in order to limit the tangents for other segments. So he's perfectly capable of coming up with these ideas on his own. But if you see something in the world of track and field that you think, hey, this might anger Gordon, send that our way too. And that's going to be great because I feel like it's going to be like Colt can go full screen on Gordon for that. And I can just relax for four or five minutes and then either agree with you or rebut you. Like, can we practice that, uh, Colt? Can we go full screen? Yeah, yeah. Can we go Gordon cam? Yeah. And like real intense Zoom. Do you want to get like, real? Do you want to get into it, Gordon? And you just I like react to what you're going for? Or? No, no. Okay. I think we just need to surprise them next week of how it's going okay. to go down. I think that was good. Though. I'm not prepared. I'm going to go on a rant about how I'm not prepared for this. Here's what I want, though, Colt. Can you, can you, can you switch to, to full screen, Gordon? Okay, good. So, but what I want to do is like every 30, just slow push. So at the end of four minutes, yeah, exactly. We're just seeing his mouth. Okay, okay. Like, yes, okay. exactly. Yes. This is what I want. If there's any blood vessels that are starting to pop on his forehead by the end, I want that. Just a very, very slow push. We can work on that over the weekend. There. Yes. <laughs> See the anger in his eyes. There's one thing Gordon likes. It's extreme close-ups. I feel like I'm being bullied right now. I feel like I'm being bullied. I'm just going to say that out loud right now. I feel like I'm being bullied. It's, no. It, we want to... Th- don't you think it should be a single shot? It's fine. I think we're overthinking it. Let's talk about... I was watching... Anything... Hold on. One more thing, though. I was okay, watching some... It was one, some talking head show on ESPN a, a couple years ago. I remember seeing the clip for it. And this... One of the, the people, maybe it's a former player, maybe it's just a regular host, I don't know. They were on uh, on camera with another person, and they're basically like, I'm about to go on a rant, so let's just do a single shot on me because I don't want my co-host to get any blowback for being involved in this. Because <laughs> they basically Keep thought the other the person. Exactly. The other person was going to get criticism because they were even in the same frame. So maybe it's me just trying to get some uh, distance from you. That could be it. All right, Fair here enough. we go. Prefontaine Classic Mile Field announced. Gordon, here are some of the names. Cole Hawker, Jakob Ingebrigtsen, Timothy Chariot, Cooper Tier, Matthew Centrowitz, uh, Samuel Tefera, Abel Kipsang, Oliver Hoare, Stuart McSwain, Jake Hayward, Colin Salmon, Philip Ingebrigtsen, This has so many layers to it, this mile field. Because it's one thing for pre just to get the the best people there, and they have a lot of the best people here, but you have so many interesting storylines potentially in this race. Clayton Murphy, you got the full, we can throw up the full list there as well too. I'm just just so interested in, in seeing this race from just a myriad of different angles. Okay, because if you say that, let's do a storyline draft. Oof. All right? Storyline draft. All right, you get first Snake pick. Snake or regular? Uh, regular. No, we don't do snake draft when it's two people. It's regular. It's back and forth. Okay. You go first. Storyline draft. What storyline do so you want? So I get to come want? up with a storyline? So yeah, what's, what's the storyline you want? First? No, no, no. You get, you, you get to come up with it. I don't know. We both have a different draft board. We don't know what other people's draft boards okay. look like. Just take your all right your top storyline and tell me what you. So what I'm most interested in, or what I think the the public is. Most you're you're the GM. In. You're the coach. You just you got to just okay. Draft your storyline. Storyline. What's your number one storyline? All pick. right. I'll think globally here. Jakob versus Timothy Cheriut going at it again. Jakob won in the Olympics. He won it pre last year. Cheriut gets him at the Diamond League final seeing what these two guys have. They're, they're the two best in the world if they're at their best. So that's got to be 
number one from a competitive standpoint. Jakob versus Timothy Chair. It might. That's good. That's a good pick. Like it. But I'm going to go with, a, I think, an even better pick. Mine is the rematch between Cole Hawker and Matthew Centrowitz. Mm -hmm. Cole Hawker and Centro had a little back and forth on Instagram throughout all of last year. Hawker got the last laugh twice. One, he beat him at the trials, and then he beat him again by making the final at the Olympics. Centro looking to kind of have his moment back, and I think it kind of starts with this. Hawker's been on the track running well throughout the regular season. Central making mm -hmm. his debut. I'm excited to see the matchup, the head-to-head -head matchup between Hawker and Centro. That's my second pick. First overall. All right. Second. First draft. Pick Good pick. Overall. So can I not pick anything involving those athletes anymore? No, you can. It just has to be a different storyline. All right. Drafted well, storylines, not athletes. Storylines. Is is Centro debut? Is that a storyline? Separate you're, from you're, your storyline? Yeah, that's that's different. Mine's a matchup between Hawker. So yeah, that's different. You can central debut as a storyline. Yeah, I'll actually no. I don't want that one yet because he might run before then. That's too risky of a pick. I'll go with this one. Let's stick with rivalries. Oliver Hoare versus Tier and Hawker. He put it out there. He wants to win this race after all the pick. four by mile drama. I know that's not a phrase most people thought they would hear four by mile drama, but there was some of that this spring. Hawker, Tier, teammates going up against Oliver Hoare, Oliver going to their backyard, trying to get the victory. You know how he's going to race. You know what Oliver Hoare is going to do. He's going to go hard, and he's going to have guys who can go hard with him in Inga Britson and Chariot. So the Ollie Hoare v. Hawker Tier, that's my next pick. Good pick. I'm going to go with a pick that, you know, kind of surprised it fell this low on the draft board. But obviously, it's got to be Colin Salmon versus the clock. You know, we don't, we're starting to get too used to these high school phenoms running well. Um, in high school, obviously, Alan Webb is the GOAT. Can Colin Salmon flirt with potentially challenging Alan Webb's mile mark that he ran in pre in, what, 2001 or three? When did it happen? One. One, 2001. It's been 21 years. Can Colin Salmon break a 21 year old mark? I don't know. He looks pretty good. I think he might be able to with the shoes, with the way he's been running. I know it'd be a big drop in time for him, but it would be. It would be a huge drop. 58. You have to go from 58 down to 53. But what did Alan Webb go from? What was Alan Webb's mile PB before he ran his 353? Yeah, fair. Fair. Yeah. It's not it like was he was running 350. Five every yeah. week. You're right. Well, yeah, Webb was not running 355, 354s. So I think this is an opportunity potentially to see maybe Alan Webb's mark go down. So that's what I'm going to pick with my, with my draft. What's your uh, next storyline? Getting into the Hold middle on. rounds. Or what, Hold what, on. What I want to comment Alan on Webb's wanna... mark. Well, I can. Um, it looks like in 01. He ran, let's see, where's the indoors? He ran 359 indoors. And then he didn't have another mile. At least not on here, but sometimes stuff gets omitted. Yeah. Uh, that was a perfect race for him, though. Like, the field was at the perfect level for him because he could chase guys down. You know, Garouge was in there, too. This is, because there is an international field, correct? There is a, there is a separate mile. There's usually a typical... Uh, a, a different mile race you can do. You're going right into the deep end. Colin Salmon's going from the Marmonte League to the Diamond League, and not just any Diamond League, but this is a completely stacked field. This is a tough, tough race to get your feet wet in against this level of competition. I know he's going to run this week at Sound Running, but this is a whole different level. So I think from that, we can interpret, yeah, it's a big swing. This is the type of field you get into if you want to run under 355. But it's also going to be very challenging him for him to, to, to keep pace. But it's a crazy, crazy big challenge. All right, so to recap, what do we got? You got Salmon. Can he get the high school record? And you have 
Central, Central v. versus Hawker. Central v. Hawker. I have, you I have, have... Orr versus the state of Oregon and Jakob and uh, Timothy Chariot. Okay, I'll go. Hmm. Okay, I got one. We haven't really d- referred to this guy as much yet. Cooper Tier. Cooper Tier. Is he a miler? My pick. God damn it. Will he be a miler? How fast is, is he, he a to miler storyline? Yes, that's a good one. Ah, that was my pick. How, f- how fast does he need to run to be thinking, hey, 5K? I'm doing all that for. I can run with uh, run with my my buddy Cole here and we'll be fine. We can go one, two at the US championships, make the team. Do you think there might even be a situation where Cole's like knows like we got to keep Cooper out of this 1500 and so he low key is like <laughs> always keeping in his ear you know you know you're a 5k guy the 5k feels so much easier than the 15 mm-hmm. stay away from the 15 cuz Hawker's <laughs> like I know Cooper beats me in every workout please yeah. love a god don't come to the 15 stay out in the 5 yeah okay i'm looking well, i'm going to look up the schedule doing right now okay about doing both yeah Okay, so I don't think it's possible. I think I've looked this up before. Oh, it's a hundred percent possible. It's a thousand percent possible. So the five K is Thursday. Oh. Five K is Thursday. It's a straight final. And then the fifteen hundred first round is I'm in at Worlds. Saturday. At Worlds is it possible? At Saturday. No, but what I'm basically what what I'm saying is if Cooper Tier Cooper Tier's going to run the 5K and the 15. If he doesn't make the 5K, he's set up to be fine for attempting to make it in the 15. Yeah. Yeah, he'll enter. He doesn't have I'm, to choose. I'm talking, yeah. You don't have to okay. choose one. It's not like he has – he doesn't have to scratch the 15 to be fresh for the 5. He can go yeah. all in on the 5 and sell the 15, which normally that doesn't happen. Normally you have to pick one. Like, yeah. Be like, all right, am I okay. going all in on one or the other? He doesn't need to pick yeah. one. He can have both. The 15 is going to be a 100% foolproof backup plan for him. So you're making my storyline less interesting. I don't like that you did that. See, I want my storyline to be more interesting, which is he's got a pick and this is going to help him decide. Also, the well, Diamond League a- debut for both those guys. Could you see Cooper Tier? I mean, I, I, no, 5K, you, you just finish. But could there be a moment when Cooper's like, I know I'm not going to finish top three, so he, he bails, he DNFs, and then saves it for the 15? I guess it's, it's fine. Hard. He can, he can, he can yeah, I find it hard to believe that he'd be that far out of the mix in the 5,000 yeah. unless something went horribly wrong. And if something went that horribly wrong and the meet's not long enough for you to recover. All right, your third pick. Go ahead. Third pick. You know what they say about drafting. You're supposed to keep your draft board kind of close to you. And you're not supposed to talk about it openly at the draft. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going with Matthew Centrowitz's debut as my storyline. I think, obviously, there's a lot of unknown. Always with Centro, right? He goes out and runs a 150-800, and you're thinking, what's the deal? But we talked about this a little bit on the bonus pod. So if you're a member, you can listen in more detail. This is kind of a preview of that bonus pod. But... Sancho is obviously getting older. Eventually, his run is going to come to an end. It came not completely to an end. He still made the team and still made the semifinals at the Olympics, ran 333. So it was, he's not washed yet. But we are getting farther and farther away from the Sancho's of old, the Sancho's of 2016 when he's winning an Olympic final. And so mm-hmm. the question is, what type of Sancho are we going to see? Are we going to see a guy who hasn't lost a beat? Or are we going to see a guy who has lost a beat? And then, therefore, the trials all of a sudden become, uh, could this be it? You know, like, is there a lot more pressure and, like, you know, mm-hmm. nerve, yeah. nerve-wracking? Does it become like a Game 7 situation for Centro at the trials? And we'll kind of get a little bit of that information based on how he does in this pre-mile. I should not have said that. I pulled the Cowboys on the draft night where people could see the board. Although I think you would have said something more central related. Now you're scrambling. Yeah, I don't know where to, 
I don't know where to go now. Well, this is the final round. This is the final round. This you is the final get... round. You, you're I... taking a flyer. You're taking a flyer here. They're they're going to be the odds of them making the team is very rare. They'll probably get cut. You know when they <laughs> when you shrink the roster well, down and storylines. I'll just go. I'll go broader. Like, is there somebody else who can challenge Inga Britson and Cherry? And there's two people I have my eyes on: Tefera who beat Inga Britson indoors, and then Abel Kipsang, who was four. He was out of the medals. He was behind Kerr in Tokyo, but he had a good season, and he does not get that much attention because of what Chariot's doing. There's some other gentlemen in here who could surprise as well, but does some does one of those two, because those guys have the resume already. They have past results that would indicate that they could do something big, but can they bridge what appears to be a pretty big gulf between the big two and everybody else. It's a very generic storyline. Love it. Yeah, but if Tafera runs 346, I win, you lose. Good point. Take that. Um, By the way, I'm way ahead of you on this draft. I know this is subjective, but there's no way you can catch up on this last bit. No, no, no. That's how far ahead I am. Uh, Type in... uh, Give me a one in the chat for Gordon and give a two in the chat for Kevin. We're going to see a lot more ones than twos. It's not close right now how far ahead I am. And, okay, go ahead. Try to sal- save yourself on the last one. Okay. My final uh, storyline is going to be American, the American versus uh, – Australian British crew. Because let's just be honest. I've said it. The U.S. men's 1500 meter running, they just don't have it together. They, for some reason, don't know how to run like the rest of the world. And I believe we need to find out is this new group, new group of Hawker and Tier going to stop, buck that trend? Are they going to buck the trend? of being soft in middle distance running. Mm-hmm. 800 meter running, we're great. 5K running, pretty, actually pretty solid. But 1500 meter running, it's, it hasn't been good. And so when you have Stuart McSwain on the track, when you have Oliver Hoare on the track, when you have, mm-hmm. uh, who else? Hayward is on the track. Hey, Hayward on yep. Hayward Field. Um, this is an opportunity for, for Hawker, for Centro, for Clayton Murphy, for Cooper Tier to represent Team USA with pride and not be soft and start taking down some of these other guys who, you know, will go out there and run through. Like, let's say the winning time is 347. I don't want to see any American running sub 356, uh, over 356. Like, be in the mix. Run your 351s. Your <laughs> Wait a minute. That's a con- You don't want to see the Americans lose by nine seconds? That's a controversial opinion. <laughs> Well, like that happens though. They're like, "Oh, I'm out," and then they run three fifty nine. You know, it's like I that would see be a bad day. I, I think. No, I think more importantly, I don't want to see like a big separation. I don't want to see two races. I don't want to see a race for the elites and then a race for the Americans. I don't want to hear the you know, line. This is why I don't want to hear the phrase "top American." That's mm-hmm. it's like, come on, top American. What are we doing here? I want to hear top runner in the race not top american stop saying oh all the losses to the non-americans don't count also mm-hmm. if you're a pro in this race and you lose to colin solomon you need to retire that's on that's on that's my i traded i traded up to get wait. a draft pick uh, uh how new wait so if colin solomon beats any pro in this race they need to retire draft grade but you just said on a retirement colin solomon's on a retirement tour and he needs to every time he beats you you got to retire you just said he could break the high school record, which means you'd have him go in sub-353. So you think yeah. if someone runs 354, they should retire? Yes, 100%. You can't lose to a high school no. kid. You're losing to a kid in high school who's getting coached by a high school track coach. You're being paid thousands and thousands of dollars to run, and you're going to get beat by him? No. Retire. You know who could, you know who could lose to him, and it wouldn't a matter? Who? Well, right. But no, I mean, if Centro debuts there, I could totally see Centro running – like 356 and losing by a second to Salman. And then you know what 
It's going to happen probably in a couple of weeks. Centro is going to do his Centro thing. He's going to make the damn team. So that's a bad. That's, I mean, and it's, it's not a bad, bad take. I, I think losing to high school kids, come on, shouldn't be losing to high school kids. You know who's losing to high school kids? Oh. Everybody in the men's 200 right now. He ran 1949. He's not in high school. He even grad- yeah, he is. Is he in high he literally school? Literally hasn't. Gra- in high school. I thought he graduated high he's- school. No, he's graduating like right now. Oh, I thought he was he's in class. Okay, you're ruining my argument. I mean, oh yeah, he's in algebra as we speak right now. Uh, but, but okay, yeah. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Not counting sprinting. <laughs> what? That's not, not counting, counting this one specific. No, you have no, to see no. how fast Solomon goes. If Solomon runs four oh three and and beats five Americans, then then I'd be with you. But you can't say this guy's gonna run faster than every other high school in history when he should be at his peak because it's the end of his season. And then that's a bad re- result. Okay, I'll change it to I'll change it. I to was this. with you. I was to- with you on the US versus American or the US versus the world thing or the US versus Australia and Great Britain. You know who I want to see in this race though? Oh. I want to see Josh Kerr in this race. I'm bummed yeah, Josh yeah. Kerr's not in this race. That's a good story. This line. would have been Where's Josh Kerr. A perfect Josh Kerr. Well, we're out of picks now. We can't. Were you one or two on the chat? I think I was a one. Okay, well then we have some uh, misinformed uh, listeners. Oh, <laughs> okay. Are you uh, stop the count was, right now? It doesn't count. Okay, some, I see. How you... There was some response bias there. Um, oh, okay. Okay. All right. We got Travis is looking up all the people calling Salmon's beat. Um, yeah, Eric Colt, retire. Jonah Kowick, retire. Ryan Hill, retire. Robbie Andrews, retire. Ben Allen, retire. Hold on, though. For, you're a, a freshman at Virginia has to retire? No. If you're in college, you're allowed it because you're, you're not you're, – you're, you're fine. You're, you're fine. You're developing. But if you're – No, I, th- I think the move is you team, get beat. You got to retire. You, the move is you get beat by the high schooler, but then two years later you you come back. That's the due to longevity. Okay, how about this? Either he's the best high school runner of all time, or he's not. If, the, if he's the best high school runner of all time, then you have to little put a bit of a respect on it. And he's not just you're not no. getting beat by any old dude. What if I'm they did this? Saying. What if we did this in the on the world scene and anybody Yaka beat when he was eighteen had to ret- didn't didn't Yaka beat Centro and Paul Chalimo at Peyton that year when he was eighteen? Didn't that happen? Should Paul Chalimo have retired? Or because he went to a Norwegian high school, it didn't count. It's only American high schoolers that count. Yes, it's only American high schoolers what? that count. Yes. I think everyone that what? lost to Hobbs I think everyone that lost to Hobbs Kessler at the Olympic trials last year should have retired. Let's bring that up. Bring that list up. Everyone who lost to Hobbs Kessler in the fifteen hundred at the trials. Because then you can't argue, oh, like I wasn't focused on this race. I'm more, I'm, it's not a priority because that's the argument for Centro. It's not a priority to win the pre-mile, which I get, but it is a priority to do as best as you can at the trials. So if you lost to Hobbs Castle at the trials, you should retire. We got in the, in the chat, David says, what about pole vault with Mondo? He beat the world champ at Texas Relays as a junior. Again, I'm going with distance only. This is a distance only situation. <laughs> Why? I don't think it makes sense. It does make sense. This is pretty subjective. No, it makes sense. I think I like how you forgot Ari Knighton was in high school when all the headlines he was, started with high school or Ari Knighton. I thought he was a senior last no, year. No, man, that's what made it crazy. <sighs> okay, let's look at when who he, lost to Hobbs Kessler. When he ran a, when he ran twenty point three, he was going into his junior year. So Dylan Maggard. Talem Franco, Ben Blankenship, Trip Hurt, and Graham Crawford. Y'all got to retire. Well, no. See, this is the flaw of your argument. Like, Dylan Maggard's running better than ever. Made a world yeah, okay. Team. Hold on. You either got to retire or you got to leave the event. So, Dylan Maggard, you're not a 1,500-meter runner. Go to the 10K. It's fine. Be a Franco's in college. Right. I do well, like – Franco, again, there, college doesn't count. That reminds me of something Jenny Simpson said, I think it was a couple years ago. Where she like she moved from the steeple to the fifteen, but like she took great pride in not I don't know what the term was, but basically she's saying she never was like forced out of the event. Like she didn't have to change events to make a team. She took she took pride in in, in staying put. So you're saying you just got to change the event? Yeah, that'd yeah, be fun. yeah, that'd be an interesting rule. 
You get relegated. It's like getting yeah, relegated. We need relegation in track and field. If you lose to someone who's like a decade younger than you, you got to retire. Come on, retire. Yeah. There are some people who came close to retiring with the loss. I mean, if Colin Solomon well, qualifies can't... for the U.S. champs, it's 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 he's on a retirement tour. He's he's trying to grab retirement. You hand out the retirement age... papers. He's across the finish think... line. He's gonna turn around and be like. Goodbye. This is my track now. You, but you go back and you look at people who lost to other phenoms early in their career, and they've had good careers. I think you're too fixated on age. You need to be more fixated on where they sit in the world overall. I mean, that's yeah, I am fixated. I, I'm 100% fixated He's on good. it. And I will con- it doesn't matter, though. It's, it, it's more like, hey, are you the 50th best guy, or are you the... 20th best guy and if one of the people who beats you happens to be 18 or 38 it doesn't matter if your place in the world yeah but you're like pretending all high schoolers who are there's a difference between a high schooler who's winning the trials and a high schooler who's getting like 12th yeah but if you're saying he's a three if you're saying he can break webb's record and run 353 then you're putting him in the top tier of he's not in the ingerbritz and chariot tier he's not in the hawker tier but he'd be in that next group of people He'd be a okay, legit uh, diamond. He'd be a legit diamond league guy. Okay, okay. It's like you're saying if you lose to a diamond league guy, you should retire. That's weird. Okay, okay, no, okay. Hold on, I'm, I'm taking your information and I am adjusting. I'm going back to. You're making the clips. Any hard event. On Colt. This isn't. This isn't distance only. This isn't distance only. This is gonna be all events. If you lose to a high schooler, and you personally are over the age of 25, you got to retire. So you're given a pat. You're allowed to lose to a high schooler if you're under the age of 25. But if you're over the age of 25, that... you gotta retire. How does that make it better? I don't get it. Because then you can argue like, all right, you're still in the development mode. Like it's okay. Because if you're 22, you lose an 18 year old. Like whatever, it's fine. You know, it's mm-hmm. like the whole like, who can you date? It's your age plus seven divided by Here. two or whatever, whatever that is. Let me ask is. you this. It's like that. Let me ask but you this. How should you retire if you lose to someone the age plus seven divided by two? Right now, pre classic. Who's going to finish ahead of the other? Salmon or Centro? I have no idea. Which is, Centro's doing that on purpose. He's purposely making it so we have no idea. Centro could be either an A or a B. He could be legit or running 150s. So I have no idea. I don't know what his training is. I don't know. He doesn't post. He's, it's, I could see either one happening. Okay, my point is, he's above the age of 22. If he loses to Salmon at pre, then that just shows the flaw in your argument. Because, I, again, if he loses to him by a tenth of a second, it looks good. Okay, I'll I, add one more. I'd, I'd still pick him on the team, probably. I'll add one more caveat. Third caveat. Third and final caveat. Okay? If you lose, and you're over the age of 25... And it happens twice. So you have to lose to him <laughs> twice. If you lose to him twice, then you retire. So it's a two, okay, it's a so two strike rule. Two strike rule. You got to go fair. back. Then it, you, re, you, know, you retired a bunch takes, of people. You got to go back, unretire. You have to reinstate all those people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like you're on, you're on the edge. If you have one loss to, to uh, Solomon and then you get a second loss, you're out. Two strike rule. Because, you know... I'll, I'll give it. You can have one bad race. Bad races happen, right? So you're right. One bad race shouldn't matter. But two bad races, that's a trend. You're out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the chat turned on you. They were with you with your draft, but then your bonus <laughs> draft comments, I don't think, are going over well. You know. Uh, Nick says, you got some problems, Gordon. Okay. I don't got problems. <laughs> I have solutions. Under- understanding that you know, we should expect more from our pro athletes. We shouldn't expect them to lose to high school kids. All right, moving on. NCAA rankings update. Go ahead. Oh, so it's back to me. Moving on, back to me. Okay. Uh, yeah, NCAA rankings. I mean, check out the website. Um, update them on a weekly basis. And uh, the team battles are starting to come into fruition. It's kind of interesting on the women's side. We actually have an exact tie. Between Texas 
and Florida, both with 67 points. Kentucky is in the mix as well. Um, but I did on my track and field show uh, podcast. I'm not sure if it's on YouTube yet, but I did this week. I did a little kind of previewing who I think is going to win the Bowerman. And I kind of narrowed it down. Hold on. Let me, can I guess? Yeah, you can guess. I, women or men? You guess it. Well, I did both. Okay. So women, Anna Hall. That's that who you think is going to win the Bowerman? No, no. I, or, I'll give you my you top three. I did not have Anna Hall as my finalist. Jasmine Moore. Yes, she was a finalist. Grace Stark. She was not a finalist. You're not going to get the, the other finalist. Steiner. Oh, wow. Yes. Um, you're not going to get it. Taiwo? No, you're not going to get it. You're just not going to get it. The, the thrower? No, you're not going to get it. No one's going to get it. Who is, who is it? She runs for Arkansas. Oh, Britton Wilson? Yeah. I mean, I'm not. Okay. Well, you weren't going to guess her. You go through a lot of teams. Uh, Brit- I mean, how many Brit- times? Wilson- she, how many? How many foreign hurdles has she run this year? One or two? So just a few. But I think she's going to win the 400 hurdles. So there's her win. I think she's going to be on a winning four by four team from indoor and outdoor. That's a lot more wins. And I don't think anyone. I think they're not going to give it to her because it's they're going to be in like, you know. Well, yeah, I don't know. It's, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's, a, long, it's a two person race. It's, it's a two person race. It's between Moore and Steiner. So that's. How I break it down. Third doesn't matter. It's between Moore and Steiner, and that's it. it. There's a big drop off after those two. I had oh the whole Florida team making it. That's what I had. Yeah, they should make the whole thing. And then on the men's side, it's between uh, Abdi Habinur, Trey Cunningham, and then potentially Devonte Burnett if he were to win the hundred. But if he doesn't, then Randolph Ross. Hold on, you're skipping a guy. Who you thought could win it and make history? Brandon Miller? No. Who? I need to bring Lincoln back on the show to give some D2 representation. Oh, yeah. That's Azamati? true. Azamati? Azamati and, and Bassett. I forgot about those two. Ooh. Oh, I feel stupid now. I should redo the whole podcast. Uh, yeah, no, that's true. That could be the year that we get D2 or D3 athlete in the top three because after Abdi Hamid Nur, there's no one that is like yeah has a has like a stronghold on top three. So um yeah I forgot about that. I should redo the podcast. But yeah listen to that podcast track and field show <laughs> once a week on YouTube. It's fun. Uh but yeah I well, think what I was just, I was going through it. If if Nur I think needs to double again to get yeah, it. Exactly. Or to even be in the final. Cunningham obviously has to win. And I, I would almost say he's got to flirt with that 13-second barrier. Maybe not. Maybe he doesn't need to go that fast. Ross, I think, is going to win. I guess it's just a matter of how quick he goes. And then who was the last one you had on there? Oh, the men's 100 um, winner? The 100 winner See, I feel it's Burnett or um, Brandon Miller. Because he, he won the 60. Yeah, the problem is with a hundred. I could see, you know, it's hard to keep a clean sheet in the hundred because you got yeah. the two guys from the SEC and you got the two guys from the the Pac-12 there too. I mean, Miller's already got a loss. I think Azamati's going to get in there. Who made this meme? Is this Travis? What is? <laughs> what if a high, high schooler school beats of... them and they're over twenty-five? Should they retire? Should they retire? Please, they totally should. Gordon says it's okay. That probably means it's not okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. We got to draw a line somewhere. We got to draw a line somewhere with performances. You can't let people run forever. Uh, sure we can. If they pay the entry fee. David says if a high schooler has a better take than Gordon, he has to retire. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's easy, no. though. Was, was that kid who went up to you? Who was with Jimmy when we were in Penn? Was that kid a high schooler? I was a high schooler. Or a collegian. 
Okay. As a high schooler. Yeah. yeah he, he didn't have a he didn't have a take that was better than yours. He just said he didn't like your yeah. take. Which is a bad take to not like a take. So come on. What kind of take is that? Well, that's the original I, take. <laughs> disagreeing? Just that's the original take. I disagree. Yeah. Um Yeah. Did you see Colt, on, you've been uh, listening for two hundred episodes, Colt. Has this been Gordon's worst take? Colt? You're, kind, has, you're impartial. No, it has not been the worst take. There's been there's been other bangers, but see there you go. Good. Not the worst take. That's not zero. How about <laughs> does the the opinion or the thought of how does a thermostat work does that count as a take or is that just more observational? Mm, I think that's observational. Yeah, I don't think okay. that is a take. All right. All right, do you, you know that uh, about the college rankings? No, nah, I mean, it's not really college. much going on, to be honest. I am kind of interested, though, when we, the sound running me, Yara Nagus is running the 15, and I wonder if those marks are going to, they're not going, they're not supposed to count for Tifers. So it might be a little sub story plot if Yard runs really well and then like trips and falls in the ACC semifinals, and then all of a sudden, he can't run at NCAAs. It'll be like kind of wild. They'll probably petition, yeah. and I guarantee you, the they'll let him in. Like there'll be like a really hard petition to let him in because it'd be like, all right, it's Yara and Goose, but it will be interesting. To see what happens. That's a lot that would have to go wrong. Yeah, it's a lot that to go wrong. Um, it is interesting though. Collegians are going to a meet where the marks don't count. That is an interesting situation that we have found ourselves in. Yeah, as a sport. Yeah. Maybe the topic for your rant next week. Who knows? I don't want to predict, but yeah, lots of. I will double. I will ask. Maybe they're, matter. maybe they're giving them an exception, so this whole might be mute. But I'll ask if it's. I mean, do you like that rule? It's a stupid rule. Or no. But like, it's why there. It's I, why there's a random hundred meter dash of Peyton Jordan. Like, what yeah, are you doing? And I, yeah, yeah, no, no. I understand what you're saying because you see the way people get around it. And sometimes the, the way when people get around a rule in a farcical way, it makes you question the original rule. But then if you take a step back, it's like, what's the expectation? The expectation is that collegiate athletes compete in collegiate track meets. That shouldn't be, that shouldn't be too controversial. Should it? Well, no, but here's the thing. They already like carve out exceptions for non collegiate meets. I'm like not talking Milrose about that. But like, if they're going to carve out an exception, an exception for Milrose games, then why can't they yeah. carve out an exception for sound running? I know, but you're doing exactly what I said. You're finding other interpretations and using it to discount like the, the purpose of the original rule, which I think is these meets should have be their co collegiate athletes. They should be competing by and large in collegiate heavy meets. It doesn't mean pros never need to show up, but it's just you, if you're explaining that thing to another sport. Another, even if it's another individual sport, I think they're really confused. Like, wait, what? You're going to a pro, mostly pro meet in Southern California where they have four races? That's kind of strange. Yeah, I mean, it just also shows how our sport isn't, it's an individual sport. It's not a team sport. So that's why colleges doesn't really matter. It's all about the individual. Uh, but I will say there's also like a weird rule where you, in order to like have like, track practice it has to be like two weeks out from like your first race and in order for your team to like have a first meet they basically you have to have a first meet in order for it to have, be a yeah. first meet you have to have a certain number of athletes compete at the meet and then there'll be like a team like iona who's really yeah. not, just purely a bunch of distance runners they will need to go to a track meet and throw the shot put and do right, a long right. jump just because they need to do it to meet either school requirements or NCA requirements. It's like, yeah. what are we doing here? Yeah. Why is a 10K runner throwing a four meter shot put? Oh, you got to do it. Mm -hmm. There was a time they had an Iowa kid throw the shot with a broken leg. Like he was out for the season, but they're like, hey, mm -hmm. just go stand in the thing and your crutches, throw it, and then you're done. Like that happened at Iona. And they did that in order to meet requirements, which is like... Wait. Iona or Iowa? Iona. Yeah. Well, you saw they, Chalimo throw it around. Yeah, and they were trying to do it to meet their contract, right? They were trying to get to have a 10 marks or whatever. 
So they were like, all right, yeah. I'll throw the shot 10 times. Now I get my yeah. Nike deal. Yeah. So stupid. It, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm just saying when you take a broader view of it and you look at it from sports as a whole, it's, it's confusing to the outside world. That's, that was my whole, that was my whole point. And I would get, get people saying, well, we don't want them to let's discourage them going to these meets. Let's encourage competition with other collegians and encourage competition where there's events available for everybody. So teams can bring their whole squad and have competition. Right. Cause that should be the intention. Just like on the professional circuit, certain professional groups and stuff want to send people to this meet or that meet. I could see the NCAA saying, Hey, we want you to compete in NCAA meets. Um, anyway, that's another, I'm, longer I'm, I'm, I'm adjusting my take one final time. First of all, David Minter just chatted. Gordon's worst take, that's a high bar to hit. Gordon's least logical, I have my own list. Okay. It's great that people are keeping lists out there. But I'm updating my take, and I think Here's this the, is okay. going to get everyone on my side. This is going to get everyone on my side. All right. If you lose to a high schooler twice at the, on, over the age of 20, if you're over the age of 25 and you lose to a high schooler twice, the same high schooler twice, you retire. However... In sports, people come out of retirement all the time. Mm -hmm. You're only allowed to come back into the sport when you beat the kid. So you oh, can keep on, you can't come back until you beat him. So mm -hmm. if you lose to Solomon twice, you have to beat him in round three or round four until you're allowed to be a pro athlete again. Here's, here's why you'll never it make Chase it. Chase Solomon will be a little documentary. <laughs> People trying to come back into re out of retirement by just chasing Solomon wherever he runs to try to get back on the on the circuit. Mm -hmm. So yeah, email the pod flowtrackpodcast at gmail .com, uh, Gordon's worst take or the the coaching advice segment or the guess my PR, um, or you could put it in the comment section on YouTube. We'll go through it next week's segment. Here's here's the problem. This is why I don't know if you'll make it in this industry. You can't <laughs> amend the take. Even if it's bad, you got to sit in it. You got to live in it because you're not going to win every, anybody back because they've already watched that first part and they think that's what your take is. And then you just backslide. Nuance. Nah, nah. Not, I'm not so backsliding. All the best. The foundation all the of best my move it. All the best move the goalposts. You're good. You're you good, think, Gordon. You think Keep Stephen A is out there saying, and an addendum to my earlier bullet point uh, in the B block when I said no, this, what I really meant Stu was that. Stu is strong. Nah, Stu Gatz is strong and Gordon. The foundation of the take is still there. The foundation is there. Don't lose to Colin Solomon. Don't lose. I, I agree that they do not. I, hear, I, I agree that uh, pro athletes should not try to lose to anybody. 100% in agreement with that take. The problem with this take is sometimes it takes me a few minutes to realize all the flaws in it, and this was seconds that I was able to uh, – Hold, hold okay, how about this? I'm going to think, think, no, think about this no take. More, no, 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 last no. note. We have, we have, we have 30 no more seconds. Amendments. No, that's not an amendment. It's else. a commentary. It's commentary. Hold on. Your brother full, full is a high school cold. coach. Your, your brother's full, a high school screen, coach, cold. right? No, no, not full screen. This is, I'm talking to you, Kevin. Your brother's a high school coach, right? You can still talk to me. Yeah. Is your brother a high school coach? Correct. Track coach? All right. Who's his best runner? How fast is he? Uh, he, um, time wise or time wise, time wise. He, I'm, I mean, well, about really what? what does he, he run went, a mile in? He went to and I, he made NXN. Um, okay, he made NXN senior year. But what yeah. can he run a mile in or 5k um, or two mile in? I'm trying, I'm trying to look it up. I mean, 420 to 420 miler faster, faster, 415, 415, 410 in, in high school or he's in college, high school, now. in high school, in high school. I'm looking it up. Is it really? Do I need to actually have the exact number here? Uh, yeah, no. He ran, just tell me roughly. Um, nine oh nine two mile. Okay, nine oh nine two mile. All right. If a professional athlete were to lose to your brother's top high school runner, do you think that professional athlete should be still running professionally? Nine oh. If if a professional athlete couldn't run, like, struggle with something. Would it be? Could it be the high schooler, the high schooler that your brother coaches? Do you think they should retire? He should retire. 
Well, I'd say their prospects aren't very strong. I don't know if they'd be a pro. Oh, no, hold the prospects aren't very strong. No, they they should retire. They should retire. Come on. Yeah, but why are you comparing a, a 910 to a, a potential 353? How does this because make your why, argument stronger? Why are you only thinking that high schoolers run 353s? Because they don't. That's what you Sometimes base... they run slower. No, dude. You based your entire argument around Colin Solomon at the pre-classic after you said he could break Webb's time. You can't pull out a random high. I ran, uh, I ran ten ten in the two mile in high school. If uh, yeah, and if you, you, you could be a pro, I wouldn't be the pro runner then. It's not even worth discussing. That's why. Just, just like if someone runs mid nine thirties, we're talking about a very specific athlete in a very specific race. It's a stretch that he's in that field. He's obviously in that field because he's a pro or because he's a high schooler, right? But he's in that field because he could potentially run really fast. So losing to him, while not what they want, I don't think is the end of their career. If he runs 353, especially, it's not the end of their career. The irony would be if Solomon were to run well and beat Centro and then Centro retires at the end of this year, I'll be like, I was right. He's following the Gordon rule. I kind of want that to happen. That would be kind of great. All right. I want to end some sad news in the world of track and field. Pivoting to, to, to sad news here. Uh, Kenny Moore passed away at the age of 78. Uh, ran collegially at University of Oregon. Made the Olympic team twice. Finished uh, fourth in the marathon. And then went on to become a writer. Um, covered track and field for Sports Illustrated for many years. Considered one of the best track journalists of all time. Um, wrote the book about Bowerman, the biography, Bowerman and the Men of Oregon, also the Without Limits screenplay, personal best. He was actually, he acted a little bit too, just uh, an incredible life. And if you haven't read, I mean, go, you can go back and read all of his, you can find all of his archive track writings, uh, phenomenal writer, but in particular the book, Bowerman and the Men of Oregon. He was a perfect person to write that book, obviously being one of Bowerman's athletes. Um, just a, he's a big figure within the track and field world. And if people haven't um, read any of his work, I just encourage people to go out and, uh, and check it out and an incredible life to be that successful athletically and then go on to another uh, line of work and, and succeed as well as Moore did. Had an, an incredible life and a, and a big legacy. So condolences to friends, family, teammates, everybody in the U of O community on the passing of uh, Kenny Moore. Did you ever meet Kenny when you were – Living on campus or in work or whatever? I, I didn't. I remember, I think his book came out my senior year of college, and he came to a track meet to talk about it before a meet. I have this memory of him addressing the crowd when his, when his book was coming out because everybody anticipated Because everybody's heard the stories about Bowerman. And if you've seen any of the pre-movies, he's this larger-than-life figure. But – it hadn't all been collected in, in one place and told with the personal information and also just the skill that, that Kenny Moore had. So I, a lot of people were really anticipating that book to get the, the full story on Bill Bowerman, especially people like me who weren't around during that time. So no, I, I didn't have the privilege of meeting him personally, but um, I remember being at that track meet and him, him addressing the crowd. Obviously, there's so much history there as well, too. So yeah. Big figure in track and field. Rest in peace. Long year, long life though. Seventy eight. It's a full. It's a full life. Um, yeah. yeah. Always sad. He wrote. When... I was what researching. I was. I was researching something. Remember that Carl Lewis, Mike Powell epic. You know, long considered one of the greatest track and field competitions, if not the greatest track and field competition of all time in Tokyo when they went back and forth in the world record. I. I. Kenny covered that. And like he wrote like the the definitive story for that. It was just going back and when I was wanting to learn more about that competition, he told it from such a comprehensive perspective. It was uh, it, it it was just it was incredible to think that oh yeah, and this guy was one of the best runners in the world too, right? Like how many people can do that? <laughs> yeah, typically you're only good at one thing, not one thing, and then completely shift and be great at another. You know, it's kind of hard to do. Yeah, yeah. Well, and if you're we we interpret writing nowadays, you know, differently. Like Kenny Moore, like went into that field and 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 wrote it in the way that 
other journalists w- were writing. It wasn't as if he was just saying, I'm the, I'm the former athlete. I'm going to write this way or that way. It's like, no, he became a, a, you know, went into that world and became one of the best. So yeah. Check out his book if you if you haven't had a chance, um, or read some of his articles. Google, they're out there. Um, that's it for the pod. That's it. Um, like and subscribe. Yeah. So send us the emails. Gordon's worst take uh, was this it? Was this close to it? Um, can it get worse? Uh, Coach uh, advice: If you're an athlete or ma- any level of athlete, youth, masters, doesn't matter. Um, and then what was the other one? Oh, guess my PR email that put in the comments, reach out to us. We want to have some fun with those segments next week. Thanks to Colt for producing. Thanks to Travis for producing. We'll talk to you guys on uh, Monday. Have a great weekend. Enjoy all the track.